still kind of in awe. No awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. Right now it's 5:34, and we're eight minutes away from our first stop of the morning, which is this spot that's kind of—they call it like potholes. I don't know. It's kind of like grassland habitat with some ponds and marshy stuff mixed in. We're gonna be looking for a lacan sparrow, sharp-tailed grouse. There's a little area of woods somewhere around here where I'm gonna look for morning warbler. But anyway, what? That is something. Where? That's something big. On the road? That was a freaking wolverine. I swear. It's a deer, Dad. Oh, is it? It's it looked small and deer. sleek. That was a deer. <laughs> Get or a video. wolverine. Not a wolverine. But anyway. We're gonna see what else we can find. We've got a bunch of spots today. It looks like we have some cloud cover, which if that stays is perfect, because that means I can shoot all day in nice soft light and not just be restricted to the soft light in the morning and in the evening. So that that should be good. Sun's rising. First pin is for the con sparrow. There's a bob link right in here. He was singing. So this morning has been off to a great start. Haven't even really been filling a time because it's been so busy. But was listening for the Conce Power for a while at that spot and turned out it was further up the road. Wound up getting great views of it. First time ever seeing and hearing Lacan Sparrow. So that was really cool. There were sandhill cranes calling all over the place, two American bitterns that flew across the road, and just had a morning warbler over here. There's a morning warbler singing right here. That's it right there. Very uncooperative for photos. And it's just kind of sticking pretty deep in there. But it's just been, it, it's been really good so far. Because this was my only spot for Lacan Sparrow. It's been really hit or miss. I'm just so glad that we got it. So right here, that is another morning warbler. I think there's at least like two or three. There was the one back there that was really uncooperative. This one is not really all that cooperative either, but I was able to get a video of it and I got some nice pictures of it silhouetted on that branch right there. I will say it's not really coming down low. It's sticking pretty high. I was hoping it would come down in like some of this mossy stuff right here, but definitely really cool to see. A nice golden winged warbler singing. Was glad that I got to see it because I heard it. But the problem with their song is blue wings can also do a song that sounds just like golden winged. And there's also, you know, the Lawrence's, Brewster's, the golden winged blue winged warbler hybrids. I wanted to make sure it wasn't any one of those, which this looked like. This looked really good for our pure golden winged. There's Winter Wren singing away back there. That's cool. I always like hearing them.
place is so cool. We've got Savannah Sparrow, Clay Colored Sparrow, Leconte Sparrow, all singing right here. Bobbling all over the place, Swamp Sparrow. Back there, Morning Warbler. Sandhill Crane. Oh, and some winnowing. Wilson Snipe. It's just so cool. The light right now kind of sucks. It's getting kind of harsh. I was hoping it was going to be overcast all day so I could shoot all day. But now I guess I'm going to head off into the woods a little bit where there's still some clouds. That's the Leconte. Basically in the same spot it was before. I'm not seeing it now. There we go. That's the Leconte though. So cool. Here, let's go down the road. Holy freaking shit, that's Upland Sandpiper! That was crazy though, so I was just talking about Upland Sandpiper. Then I thought my dad was on a bobbling, but there was a bobbling, but that wasn't what he was looking at. But no, it was the, an upland sandpiper, only second one ever. So it's too funny because I was literally just talking about them. That's another bobbling singing away. Mine's pretty harsh, but so I at least got some dog shots of that uppy. I'm on a grouse. No freaking way. Are Ground you serious? right there in the field. No way. Yeah. I thought it was a rabbit. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I don't know. That's the grouse. Let's try to get a video. Right in the center of the frame. Harsh light and kind of far and bad views. But that's life or sharp tailed grouse right there. So freaking cool. In the field. That's crazy. Three sharp tailed grouse and upland sandpiper all right here. So, so far, I just got all my targets for these two days. Decent amount of heat shore at that point, but there we go. Sharp tailed grouse right in the center of the frame of the scope. And then over here, let's see if I can keep going and get on the other one. Well, there's t three total. I may have to uh, stop filming and get the other one in. But there's the one by the bush. And there we go. Another sharp tailed grouse. So cool. And then. Last but not least, sharp tailed grouse in the tree. Three sharpies total, and there's probably more out there, but these are at least the three that we can see. Flapping his feathers or something. Look at this one in the scope, oh, see it? He's preening. Let me see. Oh, you're in a close one, though. Yeah. Yeah. There's one out there. No, there's five then, Trace, if you see another one. Yeah, there's five. I know he's coming back out. He's moving. We flew by. What is that bird? That was the yeah. There's so many here. Just scan like all through all these little clumps of grass. There's all grouse. There's at least two upland sandpipers out there. But this is just crazy. Whoa. So we're now at another location trying to photograph some sharp-tailed grouse because at the spot where I was previously wasn't really the best photo opportunities. This spot, along with actually a bunch of other spots that I have for this trip was given to me by Emily from the Peck Deck on Instagram. She has amazing photography. Make sure to check her out, Peck Deck on Instagram. But she hooked me up with so many great spots for this trip, so huge shout out to her for that. And we were just along this road at one of the pins that she gave me and we just got another sharp-tailed grouse what was cool about this one is it was closer, so I was able to get some better shots. At one point, it was right along the side of the road, but it flushed by the time uh, before I was able to get my camera out. Here, Meadowlark's calling, Savannah Sparrow. This looks like good habitat for Nashville Warbler. <gasps> Emma, what's that? What? That's a turkey, Dad. That's a turkey. It's a turkey. Like tons. We only saw two turkey. No, we didn't. We saw there were. We still saw more grouse than turkey. Yeah, we have moose in here because this is a moose spot. So the problem that I'm running into with this particular spot, the habitat looks great, 
there's stuff around here. There's clay colored sparrows, but two things. One, the clay colored sparrows, very uncooperative. At least the ones that I was just trying to photograph. And the main stretch of the road where it looks like the best habitat is, they're leveling out the road. So there's this guy driving up and down the road on a tractor and you can't really get, you, you can't really drive along the road. The tractor's also loud and it's scaring everything away. So what I think we're gonna do is, I think we're gonna go to another spot and we're gonna come back to this spot later today or tomorrow to do some more photography here. But it's only 9.24 a.m. And I have already gotten all of the targets that, well, pretty much all the targets that I had set for today. Let's think about this. How many lifers did I get? Sharp-tailed grouse and lacons. Was that the only two? Yeah, those were the only two lifers, but that's the thing. It's not like this trip is like, you know, a spot where you're gonna get like a hundred lifers or something like that. But the lifers that I'm gonna get around here are gonna be good quality lifers. And it's also the chance to see a lot of birds that although I may have seen before, I've never seen on their breeding territory before, which allows for most times better views and much better photo opportunities. It's pretty cool, Trace. At this point in the day, it was time to head out from these areas and head over to our next spot where we were going to look for spruce grouse and try to photograph some warblers such as palm warbler and Nashville warbler. Third Great Lake I've ever seen, Lake Superior. I don't know. I want to scan, do a quick scan here. Looks cool. So here we are. Lake Superior, third great lake that I've ever seen. The first one that I've seen during the day. There was a spot sandpiper that flew by, common merganser. There were some terns out there. It looked like common and like Caspian terns or something, but they were really far. So we just got out here to our next spot. I'm actually like just sitting on the ledge of the window, rolls all the way down so that I can listen and get better views of stuff. Oh, it looks cool back here. a huge bear across the road. I don't know, I guess all bears are pretty big. Usual size bear across the road. Still no spruce grouse, but since I've gotten them before, although that was kind of a target for this trip, it wasn't like as much of a target as like, you know, my other targets. And I'm not really all that worried if I don't get spruce grouse. Updated what's going on. We drove along that road, didn't get anything. And uh, the warblers, wound up getting some good warblers, magnolia, palm, lots of Nashville. Black throated blue, black throated green, none of them were really cooperative for photography at all. I tried, a lot of them just wouldn't really come down. We went, <laughs> we got lunch, and now we're actually back at the same location again because I want to give another shot for this spruce grouse because I want to try to get some better pictures than I got in the fall. And I was just looking at a report on Ebert from just the other day. Someone had it and there was a picture and it gives me a little bit more of an idea of where to look for it. It was in a tree. Looks like it was set a little bit further off the road. And it was in a tree that was fairly sparse. So I think if it was in a similar tree or situation, I think I would be able to find it. But that remains to be seen. There's spruce grouse here. They're along this road somewhere. It's just a matter of whether or not I can find one or not. That remains to be seen. We are back at the cabin now. The spruce grouse was kind of a failed thing. I don't really foresee myself going back to that spot tomorrow. I'm not really all that upset about missing the spruce grouse. I more just spent time around there because it was like, I didn't, I honestly got my main targets this morning so much easier than I was expecting. And then the light was kind of harsh. 
so uh, especially like around the those fields in the woods it wasn't as bad like around where i was looking for the grouse and that's part of the reason why i was hanging around there i did really like getting some of those northern warblers i wish they were a little bit more cooperative for photography so tonight probably again in some of the same spots i was at this morning plus another spot for black terns to try to photograph them because that's a bird that i haven't ever really gotten good shots of so that's what's going on we're gonna go get dinner and then we're gonna head back out for some more photography and also when the light is a little bit better. So we're out here getting to our next location for Black Turns is another spot that Emily gave me where there's some good views of Black Turns. And as it turns out, this road, if you take it all the way to the end, you get to water where there's Black Turns. But the beginning of it is where I was at this morning where I got the morning warbler. Actually, a few morning warblers, which I didn't realize. There's mosquitoes everywhere. A lot of kingbirds, too. Yeah. They look calmer yet. But I got the black terns. They're far, but there's so many of them. I'm curious. Is that Canada over there? That might be Canada. That might be Canadian black terns. Where's the border? Where, where the hell are we? Nah, they're not. Because if we're here, they gotta be. Let's see if we can get some black turns in the video. Digiscope some of them. There we go, there. There's one. There were two. There's another. There's another. Just as I'm scanning, if you see those birds darting around, those are all black turns. There's another. They're super fast. Just darting all around. But they're really cool. There we go. There's more. There's a whole bunch. Whole big flock of them. Looks like they're moving more towards this way. Yep, there we go. Black turns. Is it alive? Yeah. I don't know. There's some sort of weird turtle on the rip. Looks dead. No, it's dead. That thing's dead. like freaking ugh. Never mind. Guts everywhere. I oh. didn't do it. Oh, that was the Leconte. You heard it? Yeah. Yeah, hang on. It's far out there, but it's out there. See, I don't want to get out because I'm afraid that's going to scare them. But that could be a good shot. Tell me when. Um, let me just... Alright. Keep going. Go stop. Well, I meant, up. should we go to Emily's spot? Ooh. Oh, there's two sand The grouse spot? Yeah. It might not be a bad idea. Okay. Because the stuff here, very, very uncooperative. That's the thing. They might be more of a morning bird, so we'll see how this goes. Ooh. After the, the black turns, we wound up back at the spot that we were at this morning. My goal was to try to get some shots of an upland sandpiper, and one came and landed right on the fence. It was kind of weird light. And the light was honestly still pretty strong, but I wound up getting some shots that I'm pretty happy with in my first time kind of really photographing that bird. I was afraid that if I got out of the car, it was gonna fly away. So I was shooting from inside the car, and I didn't really have options as far as like moving around. We might try to pass that again in a minute because the lighting's getting even better. It's crazy. It's 8.41 up here, and this is how bright it is. It's so bright, and even now the lighting's like, it's like just kind of honestly like getting good now. So after the upland, then we went over to the spot where we got the closer sharp-tailed grouse this morning. Now that the guy's done 
leveling out the road. Things are definitely a lot quieter late in the day than they were in the morning and definitely less cooperative, but there's still some cooperative birds to be found in this nice light. I hear the sand hills. There's some cows. This is right where the sharp-tailed grouse were this morning and where the upland sandpiper was when the lighting wasn't good. Now the lighting's great and I don't know where the hell it is. You can pull up more and keep going. I don't know if the cows are maybe scaring stuff away. The cows are very active now. They were not this active before. Oh, it responded! Did you hear that? He did look. Two of them looked. The black ones? Yeah. Look at the black ones all looking at you. Shane, the light's so good. I don't know where the uplands went. Like, I just don't see them anywhere. No, when they you were... your wide angle? You want to do any, like, uh, scenery or something? I do stuff? have my wide angle in the back, and it's already on my other camera body. And it's I was just thinking about gorgeous. that. I was just thinking about doing that. Look at that sky. Yeah. If we wait it out. If we waited for it to... If right now, it's still a little too harsh. If we wait it out for a little bit longer, everything on New York says it looks right at the front, when in reality, it's not. It takes a little bit more effort to get that one, but very well worth it. It was like right here, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's listen, see if it'll sing. It's, it's like dead silent. I don't even hear the clays anymore. I'm on, I'm on ducks now. You're gonna be coming this way. Alright. You go? Golden eye. Damn, that's what I thought. I didn't even know that they bred up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear the bit. I heard the bitter now. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get off the mic and get a recording of them. And then you're done. So right when I get out of the car to try to record the bittern, I noticed this weird bird flying in, and it turned out to be a black crowned night heron, which, while I don't think is super rare up here, it's definitely not all that common. So that was something kind of cool and random to find. So we got the bittern. We're just calling back here, so I'm whipping out the mirrorless with the mic to try to get some recordings of it i actually really like filming with this setup it's just it's kind of big and bulky for you know running around oh the car is coming we're gonna have to pull over hang on hopefully the crap doesn't fall out The current time is 10.22 and it's just now got dark and if you look over there, it's still a little light out, which is insane. But we're back, I'm back at the cabin, very successful time over at that spot. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any recordings of the bitterns like I wanted to. A lot of people wound up showing no, up, which seems kind of weird because I don't know, it's Thursday and it was like 9.30, but a lot of people wound up showing up there. Look like maybe like other birders. I don't know, when all the cars started driving around, they seemed to kind of shut up, but I got to hear them. But second day here in Michigan, halfway through the Michigan trip, and it's been really, really good so far. We brought some logs and we were originally gonna make a little fire because this cabin that we're staying at has a little fire pit right outside and we were gonna make some s'mores. But the thing is, is with how late the sun sets up here, I wound up shooting right until the sun went down. Now is not the time when we're gonna go out and make a fire, especially when we have to be up at like four o'clock because the sun also rises really early up here. So we're going to make a s'more in the microwave so that we still have a camping s'more. Key to making a perfect s'more is to not heat the marshmallow too much. I don't like a melted marshmallow. Yes, look at that. Perfect amount of meltedness, 10 seconds. All you need. Or break your teeth. <laughs> There we go, wrapping up day two of Michigan. On to day three. Yeah,
drip, drip more oh, flick the switch, kill the lights Oh, wasted City lights are shining so bright All these empty faces We don't care about them tonight 